Good morning, everyone. How are you? Very good. Uh, thank you for uh, joining me uh, this morning. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Uh, I am pleased to be joined today by Dr. Dean Blumberg. He is a pediatrician uh, with UC Davis. Uh, he's here on behalf of the uh, American Academy of Pediatrics California chapter. As well as on the phone, uh, I'm happy to be joined by Dr. Jack Chow. He is a physician who practices family medicine in Southern California uh, and is here on behalf of the California Academy of Family Physicians. Um, as you know, and we have been uh, con communicating with you over the last several weeks, uh, we are facing what could be the worst year uh, for pertussis in California in about 50 years. Uh, we are, uh, as a result, very concerned about uh, working with uh, the community and the providers in improving our immunization rates and coverage uh, on immunization for pertussis in our communities. Uh, and so today, we're announcing some very uh, simple uh, and effective steps that both providers and, and people in our communities can take to help us battle this epidemic by increasing immunization rates for pertussis. Uh, pertussis is, is very, very contagious and one of the most common uh, childhood diseases uh, and is very, very much vaccine preventable. People with pertussis usually spread the disease by coughing or sneezing uh, and being in close contact with others. Newborn infants are particularly vulnerable for pertussis and they are not fully immunized until about six months of age. So therefore, uh, it is very, very important that we take steps to prevent uh, exposure to infants from pertussis. Uh, many infants who get pertussis are infected by their parents, by their siblings, or by their caregivers. We are urging this more aggressive use of pertussis vaccine, especially when we know that immunity, immunity from vaccination uh, wanes over time, and immunity from natural disease also wanes over time. So boostering people for vaccine with pertussis is very, very important. We believe that it's time for Californians to help us in getting vaccinated and protecting themselves, protecting families, and protecting infants in California. Uh, and we are actually very fortunate that now we have a booster vaccine that is widely available for both adolescents and adults. The new recommendations that we're unveiling today are designed to properly protect more Californians against pertussis, reducing the spread of this life-threatening illness. Here is what we are asking the health community and the public to do. In addition to the regular childhood vaccination series that we are all recommending uh, children to, to receive, we are recommending the following uh, three steps. Anyone who is seven years of age or older and is not fully immunized, as well as those that are older than 64 years of age should receive a pertussis vaccination. Women of childbearing age before, during, and after pregnancy should also receive a pertussis vaccination. And any other people who may come in contact with infants should receive a pertussis vaccination. Now I'm gonna show you some charts, if I may, to show you sort of where we are with the current data in California. First, this graph is very important because it shows you the rates of pertussis in the state since about 1913. And you can see how in the earlier years, before we had a pertussis vaccine, we saw rampant disease in the state of California with as many as 20,000 cases in a given year. As you can see, as we got into the uh, 60s, 70s, and 80s with our very effective vaccination uh, efforts, we pretty much uh, eliminated, uh, to a large degree, uh, the, the very high levels of disease with pertussis. Uh, since the beginning of the 1990s, we've seen uh, steady increases in pertussis. Uh, and in, nine, in the year 2005, we saw the last epidemic of pertussis in this state. Uh, with the numbers that we see today, uh, in the next graph, I'll show you with more detail. Uh, and that doesn't show so well, so I'll walk you through it. Uh, we have, um, as of today, about 1,500 cases of pertussis reported in this state so far this year, 1,496 to be exact. That is still a five-fold increase over what we saw in the last year. And if we continue at that pace of reporting in California, 
we expect that by the end of the year, we would have seen the largest number of cases that we have seen since that graph, what I showed you about 50 years ago. Thank you. And now, this graph here, I think it's a very critical graph. Uh, you don't see in the bottom, but basically you have different age groups. Uh, the very, very far left shows you those infants that are on the six months of age. Then you have six months of age to six years of age, seven to nine, uh, and so forth and so on. The important point of this graph is also that you have the rates by race and ethnicity, as well as overall. So the purple bar shows you the overall incidence rate in the state for that particular age group. Then you have the blue bar shows you the incidence rate in the state for whites. Then the green bar shows the incidence rate in the state for Hispanics, uh, and yellow for Asian Pacific Islanders, and orange for African Americans. So as you can see here that for infants, for those that are less than six months of age in California, the highest incidence is for uh, Hispanic children, Hispanic infants, but nonetheless, you can see that there's also very, very high rates of pertussis among white infants. So both Hispanic infants and white infants have the highest rates of disease uh, in that particular age group. However, as you progress in age and you get to adolescent years, uh, you see that that reverses where uh, you still have the highest rates being for Hispanics and, and for whites, but the highest rates overall in adolescents are for white adolescents followed by Latino adolescents. So the message here is that this is really a disease that affects everybody uh, equally. As you can see, we have high rates uh, in many, many communities. Uh, and therefore, we are uh, very, very concerned about making sure that everyone gets, gets a vaccination. So getting vaccinated for pertussis, we believe, can change the pace of progression of this disease. It can actually prevent many, many bad cases that end up in the hospital. And we are convinced that it also prevents infants from dying from this particular disease.